Ow. 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 Today, we'll be taking a look at what happens when you put honey, or more correctly, manuka honey, into our eyes. But Antonio, you're a health professional. You shouldn't be promoting dangerous behavior. No, but it's legit. There are several studies stating the anti-inflammatory and antibacterial effects of manuka honey, from reducing signs and symptoms of blepharitis, all the way to reducing central corneal thickness and corneal edema, which is actually quite incredible. Something like a corneal edema, if untreated, can lead to permanent vision damage. And for something that these little buzzy bees create with their nectar and saliva, having the ability to combat inflammation is quite amazing if you ask me. Welcome to Gelato Gelato, what can I get for you? Um, yeah, could I get uh, one scoop of the nectar and bee saliva please? So I came across this gel, or should I say Forte Eye Gel. Um, you're supposed to dispense onto the tip of a cotton bud and gently apply along the lower lid margin three times daily or as directed. To tell you a little bit about the benefits of manuka honey, given that you're not allergic, are as follows. They are proven to be anti-inflammatory. Also, the antibacterial properties of manuka honey are far greater than that of normal honey. And they come in cute little tubes like this, very easy to squeeze out. What makes a honey a manuka honey is that the nectar used in the creation of it must come from the tree Leptospermum scopatium, or more commonly known as the moldy name manuka tree. Manuka honey is pretty hype, not just in New Zealand, but now spanning globally, and with the high demand and limited supply, the price of manuka honey has skyrocketed over the last few years. I remember back in university seeing posters recruiting participants for studies and one of them was Hey, did you want to put honey in your eyes? And I was just there thinking No Well, here we are. Now we have the option of putting in honey into our eyes directly and easily. So let's give it a go. I'm just using any old cotton tip that you can find. And you have to put a little bit on. And now all you have to do is put it onto the lower eyelid three times a day. So here we go. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention is that if this stings, it's completely normal. Ah, okay. It's definitely stinging now. Ah. Now, because this is actually, it, it says on the packaging 980 milligrams per gram. So that's 98% just pure honey. Oh, I'm gonna, oh wow. I can tell you now you're gonna need a tissue for this. Be right back. Oh, okay. I'm back. Oh, wow. Whew. For me, the stinging didn't really last for more than two or three minutes. So if you find yourself having really, really stingy eyes after putting them in, just keep in mind it's completely normal. It should clear up pretty soon. But from a clinician's point of view, I can actually see that this sort of stinging almost induces tear production in a way that it sort of flushes out any debris that could be on the eyeball itself. Very reminiscent to sort of like flushing a toilet where all that water flushes out anything that could be there. Maybe the toilet wasn't a good analogy. In case you're wondering whether manuka honey comes in eye drop form, it certainly does. But I wanted to use this opportunity to show you that even if you put 98% manuka honey in your eyes, it's completely safe. And if anything, it has anti-inflammatory properties. In fact, it's so safe that even if you ignored all the instructions and used the gel as if you would with any other eye gel, which is to just put some on your inferior fornix directly, then it really wouldn't damage your eyes either. Here, I'll show you. Now remember, please do not try this at home. I'm doing this so that you don't have to, in case you are curious of the outcome. 
which is just a lot of pain. Well, here goes nothing. Ow. 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 I don't regret a lot of things, but that maybe I do. But it's fine. I'm good. My eyes are still working, so I'm not blind just yet. I sometimes find it very difficult to recommend Optimal to my patients because I know that it brings the stinging with it. It's almost like prescribing a patient with mild pain as a side effect. I see myself recommending Optimal for patients who have tried everything and are willing to do anything for their dry eyes, even if it means a little bit of pain. Do I think Optimal is dope? Hell yes. There are too many times where patients will ask me, are there any natural ways of improving my eyesight? Firstly, I still have a hard time drawing the line between what is natural and not. Just look at our surroundings. What's natural? But if I was to guess, Optimal will probably come closest to the type of natural you're looking for. It's 98% Manuka honey, it's got no preservatives, and it's clinically proven to help with symptoms of dry eye, such as blepharitis or even corneal edema. So if you haven't already and you want to give it a go, then go for it. I would highly advocate it. But with that being said, I'm going to end the video here. If you learned something new or at least found something useful, then yay, thumbs up to you. If you want to thumbs up back, then that would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.